vocation is a call from God and that call can comes from our baptism and um, God implants that seed within our heart and he wants us to be happy and so whatever God wants us he's going to draw us to so whether that is a vocation to married life single life priesthood religious life it's a calling from God to help us draw us closer to him well it actually happened back in uh, 1993 when Pope John Paul II, Saint Pope John Paul II now, uh, came to Denver, Colorado for a World Youth Day. Uh, the first and only one that has been in America. And I was a, a young, uh, in my early 20s, and I wanted to go out and see the mountains and I wanted to see the Pope and uh, the Holy Spirit took over. Uh, I met up with Sister Kathleen, another member of my relig religious community, and um, like I said, the, the Spirit took over and uh, I heard God's call in the midst of about 80,000 young people uh, praying the Stations of the Cross and I heard God speak to me wanting me to become a religious sister. And uh, so I went from there, I, I, I took the steps that I needed to and um, I'm here today. Our hearts are restless because unfortunately the evil one puts those temptations in there and he wants us to be agitated he wants us to be stirred up because then we're not totally with God but if we are totally with God we're gonna find that peace and I think that's when um, when somebody finds their true vocation that's a great um, notion that they have there's a great sense of peace it's not like Oh, I wonder what uh, it would be to be a, a wife and a mother. Oh, I wonder what it would be to, to be in the single life. Those questions don't arise because you know you're fulfilling God's plan and he gives you that peace when you finally uh, answer his call, no matter what that call might be. Well, I just moved to Nebraska City and went to the drive-in theater that's where the soccer field is now and Sally was with my sister and they got a flat tire in Sally's car and they walked over and grabbed me during the movie to have me change their tire in their car during the movie and then they promised me a large pizza which Sally has yet to deliver. Never have. Do you remember what the movie was? It was World War II. Pearl Harbor? No. Midway. Midway. Midway was the movie. Midway. Yes. We've been married 30, almost 34 years, and and if anyone who's been married that long is going to say that it's been perfect wedded bliss, they're they're not telling the truth. They need to go to the confessional. Um, it, there's ups and downs. There's good parts and bad parts, and that's where you rely on your faith. You know, if you don't have a strong foundation of faith, your marriage not is not going to last. Yeah, the, you know? the one stable thing is Jesus. So you can always come back there, and if you if you don't have the ability to come back there, then it's going to fall apart. And I think it's really important to our youth is to show them that, you know, marriage is work. It's not easy. You know, you don't wake up every day and hop up and say, I'm sure he doesn't wake up every morning and say, oh my gosh, you're the most beautiful creature on earth. You know, it just, it's not there after 35 years. But at the same token, if you show them, you know, that the work is worth it to have your best friend by you your entire life and in, into an eternity, it's great. You know, I always felt sorry when my kids would come home when they were young, when some of their friends were beginning to divorce. Their first question was, are, are you and dad going to get divorced? And I was like, you know, it's not an option, you know. And I think if you put that into your relationship right away, it's not an option. You know, it's not there on the table that you have to work through it you know, that you need to be there for a role model, just like in any other situation, your marriage needs to be a role model.
I'd like to consider myself as in a transitory state, but if I, if this were to be my permanent vocation, I really wouldn't mind. Um, what I like about the single life is uh, you're more able to focus on yourself and develop yourself as more of a person that you would want to be seen in the eyes of God. And that's important to me. And the way that I do that is being out in nature. Some people get the closest connection with God in a pew. But for me, when I'm out in nature, I'm hiking trails. That's the most connected I feel with God. That's where I'm able to develop who I am more, get in touch with myself, and find the connections that I may not have ever found being in a relationship or necessarily being in front of an altar praying. I don't think it's looked at in a very positive manner. Like everyone these days, uh, young or old, are looking for love, even though they may not know what love is. And they look at it as, oh, I'm going to be lonely forever. I'm going to be a crazy cat woman. Like, <laughs> I don't really look at it as something like that. I'm actually thankful for the opportunity to be able to be kind of focused on myself. I think that's very important. I think it's different for everyone, but for me, um, when I see the beauty that he's created, when I look outside, I know that I know and understand the greater purpose of life, and which makes me want to strive to be interiorly and exteriorly as beautiful as nature is, which is something that he's created. And by being that kind of example, and having kind of that glow about you when people approach you is one of the most important things that I can really think of or strive towards. So in my opinion, that's, that's it. <laughs> never really envisioned and and I have nothing against sanitation workers or anything like that but the the one thing that 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 I just could never envision myself being was a garbage collector right above that the next thing that I could not envision myself being was a priest and and so it, it just really wasn't it wasn't even on the radar screen for me growing up and and I'd have my uh, pastor for my my home parish, he would, you know, sometimes he'd come and talk to me and he'd, he'd ask me about it and try to get me to think about it. And he had a cousin uh, who was a retired priest that would that'd come and visit and he would, you know, try to, you know, plant those seeds and ask me about it. And, uh, but I never, it's not ever really anything that I wanted to do. I remember one time my grandma, uh, my grandma says that she was, um, she used to pray a rosary on the, on the porch. And, and, uh, and I remember asking her one time, I was like, what are you praying for? And she's like, oh, I'm praying that all my grandsons become priests. And I was like, uh, don't pray for that, Grandma. I don't want to become a priest. I started going to Mass every day. And just um, in getting kind of short version, one thing led to another. I started to really, um, was encouraged by the priest there to, to begin to pray about a vocation because I had never done that before. I'd never really asked God. I was like, okay, you made me. What do you want me to do? And through that process of prayer over the next several years, I really became convinced that this is what God wanted me to do. You know, especially when I was going through high school, I went through a really rough time in my life, and it was a really dark time. And and just understanding that what that emptiness is like, 
and understanding what it's like to have a you know a you know a hole in your heart that nothing in this world can really fill up and really then going through the process of, of coming to know and to understand God's love for me and that he loved me so much that he sent his son Jesus Christ and, and through that relationship with Jesus then really finding finding joy finding peace and, and ultimately finding love Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. My soul will rest in